Howdy folks, welcome to the In The Blues Tone Chat Episode 2 podcast. My name's Shane and we're going to have a chat first off about gas or gear acquisition syndrome. As you may or may not know, recently I did a documentary about the open mic night culture in Melbourne, Australia and I'm also going to be doing a documentary pretty soon about gas um, with a couple of close friends actually because one of them in particular has just been on this buying spree like you wouldn't believe. He's he's bought a whole bunch of amps and guitars in the last 12 months and it's seriously insane. Like most of the guitars are so similar that I don't understand why you would just keep doing that. I, I used to do that. I bought a few guitars in the past that were pretty similar but they always had, I guess, different pickup combinations and a different sound. The ones that he's been going for are very, very similar. I'm not even sure they would sound that different in a blind test or whether they could be picked as each individual guitar. So I guess the thing I'm trying to work out is gas, gear acquisition syndrome, usually strikes most for me when I'm not playing live or keeping busy with music in some capacity. Sometimes it's easier being a lefty because the options for me in terms of guitars are a lot less in Australia. Although, you know, if I in the US I can go to places like Jerry's Lefty Guitars and pick up one of any number of things but for me generally where I live left-handed guitars aren't as easy to find and that saved me quite a few times because it's easy to fall into the trappings of wanting new gear all the time. I think in your mind you tell yourself A you really want this thing because it might help you play better or B it might make you sound better than other people or already what you've got or it might give you newer creative ideas so these are just some things i'm thinking about what people might think when they go buy gear or you know see it just looks extremely cool it could just be something like that but yeah i'm guilty of owning a couple of strats at a time and i don't really see the point in that i understand if you want a great guitar and you want a less expensive guitar that you could take traveling or you know, you want to take to certain venues where they don't get damaged, but having, you know, five or six or seven guitars like Strats or Les Pauls that are essentially all the same, you start to have to wonder why you're doing that unless you've got loads of disposable income, for example. Or it's a hobby, but it's an expensive hobby to have. You might as well be buying cars. <laughs> as I was saying, gas usually strikes when either you're not gigging a lot, for me personally, or if you're really dissatisfied with your sound. I've made the mistake over the years of, I bought so many different amplifiers and I stress different amplifiers. I've gone from everything from the less expensive brands all the way through to two rocks and Fender amplifiers and PV and all, you name it. I've had at least one of everything except for Marshall amps I, or Mesa Boogie or Mesa Boogie. I haven't had either of those either. It's not really my kind of sound. Um, but they sound good for certain players and that's why finding your sound is so much fun. Gas for me now has changed. It's not what it was. I've spent the thousands of dollars on amps and gear in the past only to go back to an amplifier I've already had. And it's a strange thing to have great tone and then being a guitar player or an artist or whatever creative person, people get bored with certain things and they think they can find something better in something else. Probably a good relationship metaphor as well. So anyway, you go buy a different amp and, you know, after the honeymoon period is over, you tend to be unfulfilled <laughs> and you already start thinking about something else or you're totally blown away. If it is a good upgrade, then go ahead and do it. If you've already got a great tone and it sounds good to your ear, odds are it sounds great to everybody else's ear. Once you've been playing for a while, you tend to sort of understand tone. I've done a lot of audio engineering in the past too, and I found that that's really helped me understand how things sit in a live context as well as when you record. I've also come to realize that some of the more expensive amps on the market aren't necessarily better in a recording situation or in a live situation. They're maybe not as versatile as other amps. They might not have the particular sound you're looking for. For me, the best clean tone that I've had is my Blues Deluxe amp 
and I like it more than my Turok. The Turok had a certain sort of thing about it that I really liked, but the Blues Deluxe, as a clean amp, for me, for my tone, for what I like, and for my pedals, it's leagues ahead of the Turok for my particular type of sound. The Supersonic had the best drive tone out of any amp I've ever had, but it didn't have the best clean tone out of any amp that I had. So it's a trade-off there as well. If you're buying an amp for a drive tone, I'd suggest the Supersonic. If you're buying an amp for a clean tone, find the clean tone that's right for you. I'm only talking about Fender amps in terms of drive tone. There's plenty of other great amps with great drive tones as well, or drive channels. So take that into consideration. I guess the question is, what makes you so motivated to go buy something? And it happened to me not long ago. I was sitting around and I thought to myself, I could make some backing tracks. I play a little bit of bass, a little bit of drums. So I thought, you know what, if I just found some really cool drum tracks, I could lay down some bass. I don't have a bass anymore. So I decided to go and get one. I looked online three or four days straight trying to find one that I really liked. And then I found one. I had to have it straight away. It was one of those moments where the price was absolutely right. It was a good item and it was nearby. So I thought, yeah, I have to get this. And that's really all I thought about. And that's one of those OCD things I think musicians can have where as soon as they know that there's something either better or different or something that they really want out there, it consumes your kind of thought process. Everything kind of leads up to testing it out or buying it or getting it online or whatever the case may be. For me personally, it's not as bad as it used to be anymore, which thank God, because it got expensive. I'm also not in a position now that I was when I was working in my IT job where I could spend a certain amount of money a month or every few months on gear and it wouldn't you know, it wouldn't hit me as hard. So right now for me, I'm really happy with my main guitars, my 52 Tele, my Strat, my Little Crow guitar, my 335, pretty much cover everything. And then I've got my Squire Classic Vibe and my Squire Classic Vibe Strat and Tele, sorry, so one of each. And that pretty much covers it all. For me to justify spending money on another Telecaster would mean that I would want to sell my 52 reissue Telecaster and an I almost came close to that point when I played the Sur Tally and I, I'm really glad I walked away from that because since I've had the fret job done on my 52 reissue, I put stainless steel frets on there or had that done, it's now become the best left-handed Telecaster I've ever played and I'm really glad I persisted with that. And it looks super cool and I've worn it out in a way where I've worn it out, it's not relicked already or any of that kind of stuff, it's just, it's the guitar that will last me as long as I can play. And that's really cool. So for me, I don't really feel the urge to go buy another Telecaster. It's not going to improve my playing or it's not going to basically make me sound any better. It's just gonna be something different. And I think in the end, it's probably not gonna make me as comfortable playing as what that guitar does for me. So that's just one of those guitars. and. I'm yet to really find the Strat that gets me in that kind of way. I love my 50th anniversary Stratocaster. I think it feels great in the hand. It's as good a Strat as any out there. To me, Strats are pretty similar. You don't really, as a lefty, get too many variations on Strats. I did play one I really loved in Jacksonville, Florida um, a few years ago at the Guitar Center there. It was a secondhand or a used Fiesta Red reissue tally it was aged it was relic or whatever and it looked and felt amazing to play it was two grand second hand and that that time when you're traveling it's it's kind of hard to spend big bucks you know when you're on a vacation or whatever so i did let that go but you know i was so tempted to buy it and i, I remember like i got in this really big buying frenzy where i just wanted to get something while i was over there and i ended up getting a gnl um, ASAT Telecaster, which was a, a good guitar. I liked lots of things about it, but for me, it just didn't really feel like the main guitar that I, I love, which is my 52, and that stood the test of time. So unless I find something that totally blows me away by accident, I'm not actively looking for another Telecaster. And it's a really good place to be in terms of guitars. For amps, I'm always, I always love trying new amps. I always like the possibility of finding something that meets my size and weight requirements as well as tone requirements or it might set me apart in some way to other guitar players. Everywhere you go, you find guitar players using 
65 Deluxe Reverbs. Fantastic amp, can't say a bad thing about them. I, they're just phenomenal. I had one for a number of years and I recently sold it to a really good friend of mine who, you know, that will really suit his style and they're plenty loud and all that kind of stuff. But I also had a 68 Deluxe Reissue Reverb, which I've kept because basically it's different. That's the only reason. So I'm not going to go get another Deluxe Reverb now. There's no reason for me to do that unless I find an amp that does something different to my Blues Deluxe and does something different to my 68 Deluxe or Mustang or whatever, then it's a possibility. But for right now, I'm not looking for amps. I've got a 6L6 tube amp and I've got a 6V6 tube amp, which sound completely different to each other. And they both respond great to my pedals that I use with them. So for me right now, I'm glad I don't really have the urge to go buy any more guitars. I'm pretty happy. I'd love to buy the Dusenberg guitar because it is different and it sounded like it sounded amazing and it's you know not too over the top expensive when you compare it to what else you could buy for that sort of price. I like guitars that are a little bit different now and I'm leaning towards you know whatever I get in the future will be because it sounds different. I don't think I'm going to really find a guitar I like more than the 52, like I mentioned. So it, I, I doubt I will sell it. I really doubt I will sell it. I have thought about it before in the past, before I got the fret job done. But now that it's no, there's no way. There's no way that's going to happen.